Welcome to the EchoCast. I am Bond, and this is a podcast about video game news, speculation, reviews, and whatever else I feel like talking about. This week, we'll be talking about Mass Effect's surprising in seven day, Call of Duty rolls on, Twitter thoughts and moving forward, uh, as and a bunch more. Uh, a few things before we get started. Uh, subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast platform. And if you're on Spotify or iTunes, please review the show. Five stars. Best podcast on the Internet. On YouTube, please subscribe to the channel, like the video and comment with your thoughts or just say hello. A huge thanks to supporter level patrons PK, The Dawn and Cage Nephilim, as well as a special thanks to producer level patron Hassan. If you're interested in supporting this podcast and my other content, please check out patreon.com slash Bond Diesel or use your free Amazon Prime Twitch sub over at twitch.tv slash Bond Diesel. Gaming news. Let's get into it. Mass Effect N7 Day 2022 recap. I will tell you on my YouTube, I have multiple videos now, um, uh, literally like uh, five or six of them, and one more coming out as I'm recording this um, about the the N seven day uh, kind of hitting everything that came out and talking about it all and speculating a little bit. So if you want to see a video that includes um, pictures and videos and stuff uh, on YouTube, uh, you can do that. But I will kind of briefly go over everything we found out. So the gist of the information about N seven day came from a blog that was posted on the Mass Effect website. Uh, in the text, uh, it didn't give us a ton of information. Um, the main thing we found out is that the game is still in um, pre-production, which was expected. I don't think anyone really expects this game to go into full production until Dreadwolf releases next year. If they hire up enough, it, it could potentially go into production before that. But I still think the bulk of the work isn't going to happen on this next Mass Effect game until they um, put out Dread Wolf and can move over a vast majority of that team um, to get started on it. So um, they also clarified uh, the, the directors of the game. Um, it's Mike Gamble, um, Mary Tamarly, uh, Parrish Lay, um, as well as... They named, and of course I'm going to forget her name, Daniel Inns uh, is the um, development director. Uh, that this that was a little surprising because literally the day before, I had taken a peek at their hiring website and BioWare had their development director position on uh, listed. It was the only job left for Mass Effect that was listed where... A year ago, they had 10 plus positions listed, mostly director positions. Um, so uh, that was exciting for me because that was me recognizing like, oh, hey, they have filled all of their leadership positions for this next game. Uh, that's a big deal. Um, that's a really big deal. Uh, so, you know, despite them saying that they're still in pre-production, despite knowing that they're probably not going to really start cracking on the game for another year. Um, it should be encouraging for people to see that they have all of the heads in order, like all of the pieces are there. Now they're going to fill in under that. Um, but when we see Mike Gamble making posts about like, oh, we did something I've been waiting years to do today, or, you know, we all got together and everyone showed me what they're working on. Uh, and, and I'm so excited, which he's done over the last couple of months. Um, you know, that's legit because they have all of the people who are in charge of things, the big things, the narrative, the development, so on and so forth. When all of those people are there, then things are happening. Uh, they're getting to know each other. They're, you know, they're, they're meshing. They're, they're figuring out what they're going to do, things like that. Um, it's exciting. Um, if anything, just because, you know, things are happening. Um, at the end of the blog, they did have a teaser video, uh, and to say the least, a lot has come from that. So the, the main picture is of this big, what appears to be like a man-made mass relay. This is this big giant ship that helps other ships travel like instantly across the galaxy is, is the best way to explain it. If you're not a mass effect fan, um, 
there's been multiple things gleaned from this. Um, the the biggest one being that people noticed that there was some audio along with this teaser video. And after a couple hours, I think it was literally like two hours, people figured out ways to manipulate the audio and they extracted a, um, a voice clip from a character named Liara. Um, Liara was in the trilogy. Um, she was one of the main characters along with the protagonist Shepard. And um, she was confirmed a couple years ago to uh, that she's going to be in the next game um, because the species that she is can live for over a thousand years. And she was only a hundred in the trilogy. Um, it, people have been it, it, it doesn't really tell us that much that she's in the game, which is probably why they told us. Um, but in the audio, um, we hear her talking about how. Um, basically, the leadership of the galaxy, um, you know, is, is underestimating the humans defiance. Uh, we don't really know what that means. She's talking to someone else. We don't know who she's talking to. Um, it kind of sounds like she's being like spied on or recorded. Uh, we also found out that this video in general is from a ship that is surveilling this relay. Um, and so it, this may not be like a friendly thing, uh, but we'll have to wait and find out about that. Um, it, it was, it was really interesting. Uh, one thing that I found that I haven't, I still haven't really seen people notice is that there's ships that appear around the perimeter of this, of this video that have a very, very similar design to the ships that were in the mass effect Andromeda game. Um, but this, everything we've seen so far appears to be in the Milky Way. Um, and the ships that appear to have a similar design look like they're way, 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 way smaller than the arcs or these giant ships that were in Andromeda. Um, so there may be some clue there that maybe there's some relationship between uh, whoever made the Andromeda ships and who's making these, uh, these new ships in the Milky Way. Um, and then the final thing was something that people just noticed today. Um, I have a post on Twitter about this. I'll also have a video on my YouTube kind of covering this, but basic, basically a Twitter user, um, noticed that there's a bunch of weird artifacts in this teaser and, and put together and realized like, oh, these look like they're reflections. Like it looks like this video is being shot through glass or through a window. And then the bottom left of the picture, uh, or of the video, there is a pretty hard to deny reflection of what appears to be the white and red stripes of the N7 armor that many, uh, all of the N7s would wear. It's this uh, elite military ranking, um, but is especially known for the protagonist of the trilogy, uh, Commander Shepard. Um, I don't really care about that, you know, whether or not Shepard's in the next game, people are going to argue about and have their own opinions on. The, the simple fact is that this looked pretty clear of like a tiny little hint, a tiny little teaser, as well as a bunch of other reflections that you, once you realize that's what they probably are, you start to think, like, oh, okay, they're like looking out of the ship window. That's, that's kind of cool. Um, I have a video on this that, that posted uh, on Thursday, on Friday afternoon. So if you want to go and check out my YouTube, I have like pictures and I adjusted like the contrast and exposure and, and tried to see if I could suss out some, some more detail. I'm pretty convinced at this point. I don't think it, you know, confirms anything about Shepard or whatever, but I definitely think it's, it was meant to be seen. Uh, and we can take from that what we will. I did make a post on Twitter and I tagged Michael Gamble in it, basically being like, hey, did we find something here? Like, is is this a thing? Uh, and, and at this point, there has not been a response. So we'll have to wait and see. Uh, the, there were three bits of uh, concept art that got released. So in the blog, there were two, uh, as well as the, the, the Mass Relay uh, teaser video. So there was what looked like um, some... Uh, like a concept art from maybe Ilium, which is a, a sorry planet that you spend uh, a lot of time on in Mass Effect 2. Um, the, the architecture looks similar, but it's in this like red haze. Um, and, and I don't know what to really take of that. Out. It could be a new planet, it could be a new city, it could be a new galaxy. We have no idea. What I will say is that when it comes to the timing um, in that Mass Relay uh, video, 
there is a um, there's a tag in the bottom left that says like the companies involved, uh, the the commander of the ship, uh, and it has a date that says eleven seven, which is obviously for November seventh and seven day, uh, and this is ninety. Well, everyone's been uh, taking that date uh, basically however they want the next game to work out. If they want the next game to have a huge time skip, they're all being like, oh, it probably means like, you know, 2790 or something. Uh, But if they're like me and they want the game to take place shortly after Mass Effect 3, um, they're, they're saying it's 2190. Obviously, they left out the whole date on purpose to get people thinking and speculating. Um, The reason I think it's 2190, which is about four years after the events of Mass Effect 3, um, is because in all of this concept art, in the teaser, and in all the concept art we've seen so far, um, all of the tech looks like exactly the same as mass effect um one two and three the sky cars the transports the um the ships like everything looks the way it did in the trilogy um and you would think that even if it was a hundred years later especially if it was five or six hundred years later the the game like the, the the tech would look a little different would be evolved a little bit um, I've seen people be like, well, Andromeda wasn't Andromeda looked the same too. That's because all of the tech in Andromeda, uh, was old. They just brought it with them to Andromeda. Uh, so even though it was 600 years later, it was still all the same kind of tech So stop. But I'm pretty convinced that the game's going to take place shortly after mass effect three. Um, and, and I think we're only getting more and more reasons to believe that, but who knows? Um, so the Ilium art, it, it was just really pretty. It's, it's really cool. Um, there was also a really small, it's actually the thumbnail, um, of the video I just posted. There's a really small potential hint. Um, it, th- there was the Citadel, um, which is like the main hub of the whole galaxy that played a really huge role in the third game. Um, and it actually moved to what we believe is earth. Uh, and the, the little tiny concept art you can see that's actually part of a label, um, it really looks like the moon is in the background. Um, and there's actually a little ship flying at the bottom. Uh, all, you know, you know, references, you know, little things to try to at least get the fan base thinking like, oh, no, is that the Normandy or, you know, whatever ship they want it to be? Um, and, and so that looks really good. And that was really cool. Um, and then there was some... Uh, when Mike Gamble, who's the the lead producer, uh, director of the game, um, confirmed the Liara's audio, he confirmed what she's saying on Twitter. He attached one more bit of art that looks like it's from um, a station called Omega. Um, it, that it plays a pretty big part in Mass Effect Two, as well as a decent sized part as, of, as DLC in Mass Effect Three. And um, there's multiple clues that make you think it's Omega, uh, and a bunch of other cool stuff as well as a bunch of tech that looks trilogy uh, style. So um, again, just kind of reinforcing again for me uh, what I'm already believing. Whether it's true or not, we'll have to wait probably a couple years to find out. Uh, One little extra bit of info that had nothing to do with the actual announcements was um, that Jess Hera Campbell uh, is returning to Bioware as the mission director for uh, Mass Effect, the, the next one. Um, she worked on Andromeda. She worked on some other games um, after kind of poking around. It seems like um, she's pretty well liked by the community and her coming back is a pretty exciting and pretty big deal. Um, apparently her partner uh, used to also work at BioWare and also worked on Mass Effect. Uh, but uh, as far as people can tell, um, he is still working at Zenimax. Um, but who knows? Maybe that's going to change. Um, so that's exciting. And there was a panel kind of questionnaire thing done with all of the uh, voice actors and voice actresses from the trilogy, um, Jennifer Hale, Mark Mir, and a whole bunch of other people. They even had the voice of Sovereign on there from Mass Effect 1. Um, it was really cool. I got my, uh, a, a uh, you could, re- you could request them to uh, say lines from the game. And I, and, and for me, they actually did do one for me. It was really exciting. They had um, Ash Zroka, who is the, t- the Tally's voice actress and Mark Mir, who's, you know, Mail Shep do my favorite line. One of my favorite lines in the whole trilogy, which is the end of the Citadel DLC in Mass Effect 3. When Tally says, hey, we've had a great ride. And Mark Mir uh, says like, 
the best. And it's a really simple line. Um, but he actually has spoken about it multiple times. It's the very last line of dialogue he's ever recorded for Shepard. Um, and it's, you know, for me, it's, it's the delivery of it and where you're typically at when that line happens, you're probably, it's for a lot of people, it's the last thing they do before they go and finish the game. And so, uh, for me, it's a big thing. And for them to reenact, that was really cool. So, um, and seven day was great. They gave us, um, a ton of stuff to talk about, think about, speculate about, argue about, which, um, I'm sure if you're a fan, you've seen already. Um, but if not, it's, uh, it's definitely happening. Um, but regardless, like last year they released a blog with not really any info and a, um, and a poster that was interesting and, you know, we were able to suss some things out about it, or at least like speculate, but, um, this blog and everything that came along with it was, um, was a treasure trove. It was short of them officially announcing the game with like a trailer and all that. Um, this was about as much as I think people could have really expected, especially because, um, you know, you know, five days later now we still, like we didn't figure everything out. We probably haven't even noticed anything like someone noticed this reflection thing today. Um, you know, I, I think that there's a lot coming uh, to talk about and I'm excited for it because it will give me something to continue chatting about uh, whether you guys like it or not. So, um, so that was in seven day for mass effect, uh, the 2022 uh, recap. Like I said, there's a, probably a more informative video that you can check out um, on my YouTube uh, as well as a bunch of other supplementary ones. Um, I plan over the next you know weeks and months to do um, some, to take like individual parts of this in seven day and like really analyze it and really speculate on it a little bit more seriously. Um, I also think that the last year, which I'd say it's been about a year since we've had any real info since the 2021 in seven day, I bet that's the longest gap we'll deal with again until the game comes out. Um, I think that we will get some kind of info about the game, uh, like next summer. And then again, for next year's N seven day. And then I think after that, they'll start like a more normal, um, PR cycle, marketing cycle, um, to talk about where the game's at, because by about a year from now, they'll should be done with pre-production and we'll be getting into production and we'll have a lot more things set in stone and, and have a lot more stuff to talk about, but we'll have to wait and see exciting stuff. It was a good day for Mass Effect fans. Okay, Call of Duty Warzone 2 and DMZ. Uh, these modes have been revealed. Um, obviously, Warzone is a juggernaut when it comes to the free-to-play space. I got into the first one for like a week or two and just never really stuck with it. I've already like doubled the level I made uh, from the 2019 Call of Duty uh, multiplayer. Um, I'm almost like I'm, I think I'm at level like 44 or 45, I'm, which it's out of 55. Uh, so I think in the 2019 game, I only made it to level like 20 or 25. Um, I'm obviously really enjoying it, even though I hate it. It, it frustrates me so much, but um, I keep playing it because it is fun to just turn off my brain and, and shoot stuff. I've been having a lot of fun with that. Um, so they revealed Warzone 2, which is going to obviously replace um, the old Warzone. Um, people seem like um, they're excited about it from the footage I saw. My honest impression is it just kind of looks like Warzone. I'm sure it's got new features. I'm sure it probably looks a little better. Um, it's obviously a new map and things like that. I'm not super like, okay, like I'll, I'll play it. I'm, I'm curious about it. Um, I, I'm, I'm curious how much I'll get into it. On the other hand, we have uh, the DMZ mode. And so what this has been kind of portrayed as is kind of like an escape from Tarkov extraction, PVE VP mode. Um, a real stretch would be to compare it to like the divisions DZ. I, I don't think that's very accurate. Um, and so I saw some footage of this as well. Um, it, it, it seems interesting. It has like an insurance system the way that uh, like Tarkov does, you know, having loadouts that you bring in, uh, objectives you're trying to do, things like that, um, being able to fight other people and being able to fight um, NPCs and AI, um, having like missions and things like that. The, my issue, my concern is that even the regular multiplayer, uh, and I'm sure Warzone, and I'm sure uh, DMZ, 
it is really, really, really fast paced. And a big thing about like Tarkov is that it's a slower, more monotonous, more purposeful game when it comes to movement and gameplay and stuff. And Call of Duty is just frantic. Um, even Modern Warfare 2 with between people, you know, sprinting around with, you know, dual pistols, uh, jumping around corners, dolphin diving, sliding around stuff. It's it's just it's a it's a very frantic game that doesn't really lend itself to like careful gameplay and things like that. And this DMZ mode, if it is like Tarkov, and you know, it would lend itself to a more careful gameplay style and things like that. So there is a part of me that's kind of wondering if it's really gonna provide that like scary feeling and stuff, because you know, if they have this hyper frantic gameplay style, then the game can't be that punishing because you're going to die all the time. And it, it, like out of your control, I, that's the thing about Tarkov is you can die out of your control. It's pretty rare. You typically have to make a mistake to die in Tarkov. Um, and so I'm really curious how they're going to balance it. I, I mean, I'll play it. I'm just... I think I'll, I, I'm trying to get the multiplayer, like get that out so I can play it and feel like I enjoyed it because I'm afraid that once Warzone 2 comes out, the multiplayer is just going to fall off and it's only going to be the super sweaty people playing it. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Um, I, I want to try DMZ. I want to try Warzone 2. I at least want to get to level 55 in the multiplayer. Um, but I mean, overall, I've really enjoyed the game. I've got, I've gotten more than my money's worth out of it already, um, time wise. So now it's just kind of a matter of seeing what they do, and the big implication being that they've already announced basically that they have a studio working on what will amount to like a big giant DLC for for Modern Warfare Two in 2023. So they're not going to release a whole new game. They're going to release what I imagine will amount to like a huge DLC or update. So maybe like an extended storyline and then probably a bunch of new multiplayer Warzone and DMZ stuff. Assuming DMZ is popular. Warzone is going to be popular. DMZ is going to be the question. So we'll have to wait and see. Uh, preload for that and the release of Warzone and DMZ are going to happen next week, likely in the week that you're listening to this. Okay, Xbox uh, Activision acquisition updates. Uh, so the European Commission uh, has... Uh, stated that they're going to do an in-depth um, investigation into this deal. What's kind of interesting is, from what I saw in the reporting and stuff, is it's kind of the same old hubbub about fairness and things like that. One of the details that apparently one of the big focuses of this is whether or not this deal is going to make it harder for people with Apple computers to play games, um, as if that's like a big market. Um, is it was a really interesting tidbit in the filing um, that I, I saw reported on and I thought was interesting because like surely like like you don't buy a Macintosh to play games um, just because of having a relatively small market um, of, of like gaming enthusiasts. Um, most developers and publishers don't, um, you know, port their games to Mac um, because it's a different operating system and so on and so forth. So um, there's ways to make it work, but that's a whole different conversation. Um, so that was kind of interesting. Uh, the big thing is they have 90 working days. So 90 work days, Monday through Friday. And then you have to, you can't count holidays, which is obviously a lot of the next 90 days. Um, so I think it's around March that they have um, to finish this investigation and um, present their findings. And from what I saw, it's expected to take that long. That's what people think is going to happen. So we'll uh, we'll have to wait and see about that. Um, I'm still pretty confident this deal is going to go through. Um, and I just think it's going to take a while and they may have to um, concede to some concessions, uh, whether it comes to, you know, how they're going to handle Call of Duty first party stuff. We'll, you know, we'll see what they do. I'm curious. Uh, the Division 2 uh, delayed uh, some content. So the Division 2 is currently in year four, season 10. Um, each season um, uh, consists of four uh, like lieutenants that you have to do a manhunt for. And once you do all four of those, the, the prime target or the head target um, unlocks. Uh, currently, we're on the third target. Uh, and the fourth one was supposed to release pretty soon, but apparently won't be released until December. Um, that also means that, that the prime target releases at the same time after you finish that. Uh, and I believe we are supposed to get a new mode by the end of the year. Well, um, the year five, 
uh, the season 11, the next season of year four, the final season of year four, uh, and the new mode have all been delayed. Um, so we're expecting to see uh, season 11 um, in the beginning. Well, it says early 2023. Um, and then uh, year five and the new descent mode that they talked about previously are um, delayed to what they are stating spring of 2023. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. Um, I, I've kind of had that attitude for a while. Um, I did make a video kind of talking about this that released uh, the morning of Friday. Um, and I kind of talked about how if year five is going to be the way year four has been, year four has had some good story content for sure. Um, but, you know, each release has been super buggy. Each release has had kind of underwhelming content besides the story, in my opinion. Um, the guns and the equipment they've released have been pretty underwhelming. Most of the guns like look like crap, like they didn't they didn't even finish them. And there's ones from multiple seasons ago that still aren't like fixed. Um, the, the, there's just the, the delays and the bugs and the kind of lackluster content, um, like, like the countdown mode uh, that they released with uh, season nine, I think. Um, if year five is going to be like that, I've kind of thrown out the opinion that I don't think they should do year five. Um, I think that they should either start like pre-production on like a division three or, um, you know, assist with the other projects that they have going on in, um, in, in their studio or just something else. I, I, I don't, I, I know that there's people who are really enjoying this content. I, I, I know that there's people who are enjoying you know like the stuff but like i just i i don't think that the content is necessarily hurting the brand because i think either people don't know what's happening or they do and they're just putting up with it even if they're moaning and groaning about it i just i other than wanting to know what they're going to keep doing with the story i just am not excited for more global events for more leagues for more, you know, what like bland kind of whatever stuff, apparel events, which in my opinion have just not been very good. Um, I, I just don't, I don't know. Um, I just don't know if it's a good idea to do a year five. I don't know if people are really asking for it. They're going to do it. Year five of the division two is coming and maybe it's going to be amazing. Maybe this descent mode is going to be the best mode they've ever done. Maybe the apparel and maybe the gear and maybe the guns will be the best things that they've ever done. You know, they've talked about in this year four, they're onboarding people. They're trying to figure out how to get, to get this new team on board. Like all of that, maybe year five comes around and everything is fixed and perfect, but that's probably not going to happen. That's probably not true. We're probably going to be dealing with the same issues we dealt with in year four. And at some point, like it's gotten to a point where every time they release a new update, I just assume it's going to be broken. And that's not where you want to be. Like you, you don't want your game or your community in that situation where they just assume your content's going to be broken when it comes out. But, but that's where I'm at. I mean, I, I, that's what I assume. So I don't know. I'm kind of curious to what they do. Um, like the fact that they're still delaying content, you know, all this time later, um, it, it, there's either not enough people or they don't know how to do what they're trying to do. Um, or it's a combination of those factors. And I just, I don't blame the developers. I don't even blame massive, but it's one of those things where like, it seems like Ubisoft was like, yeah, sure. Do more content for the division two but we are not going to give you the resources to do it well. So, so there we go. I don't know is what it is. I guess um, I'll, I'll move on and I'll be excited for the new content when it comes. I'm just probably not going to be waiting with bated breath over it. Uh, so getting into some of the quicker stories, uh, game award uh, nominations will be revealed on Monday, the 14th. Um, I plan on doing a live stream at noon when they do reveal um, all of the nominations and I'll kind of go through them all, talk about the ones that I would prefer, the ones I think are actually going to win. And then we can talk about the esports teams and I can tell you about how I don't know who any of them are because I don't follow that stuff. Um, 
the show is actually on December 8th. I do plan on applying to be a streaming partner. Once again, I think I've done it the last two or three years and, uh, and I'll be excited to see that. I don't really care about the awards. They just, that show tends to have like the best trailers. So I'm still holding out hope that maybe there'll be like a Mass Effect trailer. I definitely think there's going to be a Dreadwolf Dragon Age trailer, um, as well as like uh, maybe like I'm hoping like Starfield shows up, maybe Hellblade, uh, Sinuous Saga, uh, you know, things like that. Uh, there's a bunch of games I'm hoping that we will see. So uh, I will be doing that live stream on Monday at twitch.tv slash Bon Diesel. Uh, Final Fantasy 16 had a big controversy this week when uh, during an interview with the developers, they said like, hey, why is everyone in this game white? And the developers were like, well, uh, this is a fantasy game, but we are basing it on the history of Europe. And so that's why. And for the most part, people were like, well, that's weird because you have space magic, uh, fantasy magic stuff. Um, but then you're choosing to make this part of the game realistic, quote unquote. And uh, you know, people basically just didn't like that answer. Uh, and uh, the developers basically were just like, no, oh, OK. <laughs> so at the end of the day, it's it's a black eye on that franchise and that developer. But people are still going to buy that game like crazy. And when it comes out, they'll just sneer at it <laughs> while they do it. Um, I, I don't necessarily think that like every game, you know, has to force you know, diversity and stuff in there just for the sake of it. But if, if you, it, it's, it, I'm sure it's kind of tough for them because, you know, they, they could have, and they probably would have been better off just saying like, Oh, that's just what we did. Like, that's just how that, that's just how that's this, that's the design aesthetic we're going for. And, um, you know, and, and, and that's okay. But instead they, they, they kind of gave some, what a, a lot of people felt, uh, were you know uh, not very good answers, and uh, and and now we are where we are with it. I, I think that will blow over pretty quickly, to be totally honest. Um, but you know, we'll see. Uh, Halo has big winter update, uh, and the notable thing is that Forge um, has that that mode has released that is expected to be a pretty big deal um, for the game, um, especially as it's been suffering from a lack of content. And um, yeah, it's. I'm not really interested. Um, I think that there will be a pretty large um, base of people who uh, are still playing it and enjoying it, uh, who especially will be excited about Forge. Um, and that's super cool. Um, be basically, the only thing that's going to bring me back to Halo Infinite is more story. Um, I don't really care that much about the multiplayer is really good. It's just not what I'm into. And um, I, I'm not really that worried about the other stuff but if they if they release another story uh dlc or something i am i'll be back for sure but i'm really glad this release it seems like it had a bunch of huge updates it seems like they're going to start getting updates out quicker maybe they're kind of getting their feet under themselves it's probably a little too little too late at this point but it's uh it's good that they're still supporting it and we'll have to see if that battle royale mode comes because that could be pretty cool uh, Death Stranding hit 10 million players. That's a pretty big deal for a game that I think a lot of people consider pretty niche. Um, I'm sure this has helped a little bit by its PC sales. Um, it says 10 million players as well. So you have to remember that um, Death Stranding is on Xbox uh, Game Pass PC. Um, so I'm sure that was probably a pretty big boost for it. Um, but obviously the sales on PlayStation were probably very good for this. It's a Kojima game, uh, and that's a, a a very loyal home for him over there. So good for that game. I have no interest in playing it. <laughs> uh, Remedy officially announced uh, Control 2 today, and um, they announced that they will be collaborating with 505 Games. I, I peeked into it a little bit. It seems like 505 is basically just a publisher at this point. Um, I, I believe they do have development studios that maybe they do some support um, for the games that they are publishing. Um, but uh, this is cool. I, control didn't really grab me. I didn't like the, I don't know if it was the controls or what, <laughs> ironically. Um, I don't know. It just never really caught on to me. I, I want to try it again one day because I suspect I, I would like it if I gave it another chance. Um, so this is super exciting. Lots of people love control. I'm not super into it, but hey, new games are coming and that's a good thing. I don't know how Remedy has time because apparently they're making like eight games right now. And I don't think they're a very big studio, but you know, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, and then the final thing here is just kind of talking about Twitter. Um, 
Twitter is a pretty big deal to me because it's how I do the bulk of my uh, my research for the podcast. It's where I promote most of my content um, the most often. Um, and it's honestly the social media I enjoy using the most. Now, obviously, with the recent acquisition, uh, that's just been kind of a crap show. Um, you know, things changing every single day. Uh, seems like someone's a little overwhelmed or kind of in over their head on something, but we'll probably never be able to admit it. Um, long story short, I'm going to stay on Twitter until it shuts down. Probably. Um, I, I do hate seeing some people leaving who I've, I feel like I've known for a long time. I've checked out some of the alternatives like Mastodon is one of the most pretentious, stupid programs or, or whatever you want to call it that I've ever interacted with. Um, I, I will actively, I'm, I'm going to actively avoid it because it's just so decentralized. Like it, the whole point is it's decentralized, but it's so fragmented and it's such a crap show and it's so ugly. I, I just, I think if Twitter does go down or if something else takes over, we probably don't know what it's called yet. We probably haven't heard of it. So we'll have to wait and see about that. Um, I'll be around on Twitter. I'm not going to be paying for partnership or uh, verification or whatever, unless they like drop the price by half and give away more features. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I'll go down with the ship. Uh, and so if you want to find me on there, I'm at Bond Diesel. Um, you can also find me on Instagram. I'm uh, Bond uh, like underscore Diesel on there. Um, and honestly, on YouTube, like if Twitter did somehow go away, honestly, I'd probably lean on. Um, yeah, probably YouTube the most in Discord, I believe. Um, so now we'll see what happens. I am very curious. What I honestly think is going to happen is I think he's uh, I think he's going to have Twitter file for bankruptcy. Uh, he's going to try to recover. I, I'm not smart with all this stuff, so maybe none of this is, works. But he'll try to recover or uh, push off as much of the debt as he can onto Twitter, have it go into bankruptcy, and then sell it off super cheap to someone. There's even been rumors of like Microsoft buying it. I don't think that's really going to happen. But I think that there would be interest. And if he doesn't taint the brand too bad, if if he would turn it around quick enough, um, that we would potentially see him uh, sell it to someone. And, and maybe that person would want it to actually work. Uh, we'll have to see. It's a, it's a weird time uh, right now if you're a Twitter fan. So there we go. Okay, so some listener questions. Uh, if you have any gaming-related questions, topics, or news for the next episode, please jump into my Discord. The description is in uh, the link is in the description of the podcast, uh, and you can post uh, questions or whatever for the next show. Uh, this week we have Master Prime. Uh, the first question is uh, a game. Uh, a game needs to charge. Um, if a game needs to charge, does a game need to change core gameplay to be considered a sequel? Um, no. Um, I think uh, Mark Dara has done a few videos about this and talking about the concept of true sequels, um, where some games, you know, are technically sequels, um, like one takes place after the other, but the game mechanics like like completely change, like almost like the change between the old God of War and God of War twenty eighteen. Um, I, I I don't I don't think they have to change to be considered a sequel. I, to me, in my brain, sequel is very very story related if if the story is picking up directly after or um directly involving the events of the previous one or i guess as a prologue or as a as a prequel um then that's that's what denotes a sequel to me so i don't really care about game mechanics when it comes to that or gameplay um, but other people may have their own opinions uh, if you were a game developer which platform is uh, the most friendly to develop and to publish your game on um, I mean, to develop probably Xbox and PlayStation, um, for publishing purposes though, like if I wanted to be able to make the smallest possible project and make the most money, I would want to put my game out on switch a hundred percent on switch and mobile for sure. That's where I would want to be. Uh, and then thoughts on battlefield 2042, getting a second year of content. Great. It's a really good game. Um, I, I watch a bunch of different podcasts and stuff. And, and recently there was a, a guest on a show who was just like completely dragging 2042. 2042 may have a lot of mistakes, especially on launch. Um, but the game they were talking about was the game that launched and not the game that's out right now. And that's really frustrating because it's okay. Um, like maybe some people wrote 2042 off when it came out and that's fine. 
And you can speak to that. But when I see someone speaking very confidently about the current state of 2042, who obviously hasn't touched the game probably since a week or two after it came out, that's really frustrating because they shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> it's um, it, it's not perfect. It's never going to recover fully. 2042 won't, but it's pretty good and it's only getting better. And the year two, I think, is going to come with the classes and things like that. I'm really excited. I, I can't wait to play it. So. Uh, I think that is a very good thing. Uh, so thanks for your questions, Master Prime. And again, if you have any of your own, jump into my Discord and ask them there. Uh, no poll this week. I just didn't feel like doing it. Um, and for content updates, I am going to be recording a podcast this weekend with N7 Legend of the Mass Effect Lorecast. Um, I... I hit him up the last time we spoke over the summer and basically said like, Hey, after in seven day, if anything interesting happens, uh, can I have you back on? And we can kind of debate um, that and, and speculate and so on and so forth. He agreed back then he agreed again this week. And since things did happen, uh, I'm going to have him on. Um, I like in seven legend because he is kind of the straight man. I feel like he's not super willing to like to go over the top with speculation and things like that. So, uh, he uh, is probably a good balance for me who I, I feel like I get a little more into it or a little too uh, down my line. So I'll um, be on the lookout for that podcast. I'll probably try to post it Monday or Tuesday at the latest. Um, and I think that's what I have for this episode. So um, please subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast platform. And if you're on Spotify or iTunes, please leave a review. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel, like this video and comment down below. You can find me all over the internet as Bond Diesel, including on Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Bond Diesel. If you're interested in supporting the show or my other content, uh, as well as getting some perks check out patreon.com slash bond diesel or if you have a twitch prime sub that you aren't using head on over to twitch.tv slash bond diesel and give it to me i've got some kind of cool emotes i don't know maybe that's uh, subjective uh that is all i have so until next time I'm <laughs> sorry.